Was that not just the most awesome Joker laugh of all time? So please be warned, there are spoilers for Batman v Superman and possibly the Suicide Squad in this video, so you have been warned. So the first Suicide Squad trailer was set to Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. This time it's even more awesome in my opinion and is set to Ballroom Blitz, which was originally performed by Sweet in 1973. It gives the trailer a fun energy that certainly seems to be the tone of this movie. One of the main criticisms which I didn't share about Batman v Superman is that the movie was too dark for general audiences. Now the Suicide Squad was always going to be lighter. Some reports indicated that the current reshoots were happening to add even more humour. However this rumour was shot down by the director David Ayer as silly. He said, when a studio loves your movie and asks what else you want, go for it. Hashtag more action. So the reshoots aren't for humour, they are for even more action. And when it comes to action, there are few directors in the same league as David Ayer. If you haven't already, do yourself a favour and see Fury and End of Watch. So DC fans, don't worry. They're not tinkering with the movie, they're just making it more action packed. Personally, I don't just want this movie to start throwing in quips every few minutes because they think it'll be better received. DC must stick to their own vision and not copy anyone else. So the trailer starts out with David Harbour's character asking, what if Superman decided to fly down and rip off the roof of the White House and just grab the president out of the Oval Office? Who would have stopped him? This is probably a nod to Superman 2 when Zod pretty much did that exact same thing. Now his character hasn't been confirmed but it appears he's playing the Secretary of State or some other high ranking government official and that Amanda Waller reports to him. So Waller appears to be responsible for assembling a team that's able to fight against alien or metahuman threats. It's also interesting the way David Harbour's character phrases the question. Who would have stopped him referring to Superman? In other words he's using the past tense which could indicate that Superman is still dead when the Suicide Squad begins and thus the events of this movie take place after the events of Batman v Superman. So we see quick shots of Harley Quinn having an implant inserted into her neck and the same with Killer Croc. Now this is pretty much standard procedure for any Suicide Squad member and this implant is generally a tracker or some kind of explosive device to keep the team in check. So for those of you who aren't quite up to speed on the Suicide Squad yet, it's basically a bunch of villains who are offered a reduction in their sentence in order to carry out crazy missions for the government that are usually too risky for the normal military. In other words, they pretty much carry out suicide missions, hence the nickname Suicide Squad. So the official name of the squad is Task Force X and is led by Rick Flagg played by Joel Kinnaman who reports to Amanda Waller. He's tasked with trying to keep all these villains in check and make sure they don't go rogue which they invariably do after all they're bad guys. But as Amanda Waller says she thinks they can be used to do some good. Fortunately, each team member is not going to be given matching leather outfits to wear <coughs> X-Men, but will instead be given their old clothes and equipment that they were presumably arrested in. Floyd Lawton, aka Deadshot's rifle and uniform, on it we can read I am the light and then way, which appeared to be a variation on the verse from the Bible, either indicating he's a man of faith or that he's lost it, depending on what the words are that we can't read. His rifle also appears to have the same words inscribed on it. Harley's gun has the words love and hate inscribed and Will Smith's dead shot remarks, you all must be crazy. Clearly because they've given the most eagle-eyed assassin a loaded gun. Amanda Waller doesn't seem phased. Rick Flagg is looking on with several soldiers pointing guns at Floyd's back. He then appears to fire several bullets through the bullet hole of his first shot. Funnily enough, in a very ironic way, Killer Croc has what appears to be a crocodile skin leather jacket, which is pretty hilarious because it's kind of like a cow wearing calfskin boots. Harley changing into her... Sporting some, let's call them interesting tattoos with a t-shirt that reads Daddy's Little Monster. This movie appears to have some awesome tongue-in-cheek humor and clearly doesn't take itself too seriously. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a very Guardians of the Galaxy vibe about this movie, which is high praise indeed. We get a closer look at Captain Boomerang sharpening his boomerangs, and then Rick Flagg explains the rules of the squad. You disobey him, you die. You try to escape, you die. It then cuts to Slipknot using some kind of grappling device, seemingly trying to escape from the rest of the squad. Now I suspect it's him who's going to be the first idiot who tries to escape from the squad and ends up with his head blown off. Now this is something which pretty much happens at the beginning of every Suicide Squad story in the comics and animation. But here it appears that Amanda Waller will be taking even less chances with this bunch and there seem to be a whole squad of soldiers working with them. And one of these soldiers is Scott Eastwood's character who is rumoured to be that of a young Slade Wilson who is better known as the awesome Batman villain Deathstroke in the comics. Now the actual members of the Suicide 
Bad Squad this time are Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Killer Croc, Captain Boomerang, Slipknot, and Diablo. Captain Boomerang seems to throw one of his boomerangs at Katana, who easily deflects it with her Soul Taker Samurai Sword. Now the sword is capable of basically imprisoning the souls of those it kills, as we see later in the trailer. It allows the wielder of the sword to communicate with that imprisoned spirit. But it's unclear why Katana is on the team in the first place, as she's historically not a villain, but a hero. Her name is Tatsu Yamashiro. She was born in Japan and loved by two brothers, Takeo and Maseo. She chose Maseo. Takeo later joined the Yakuza and purchased a mystical sword which he used to kill Tatsu's husband in a jealous rage. In other words, he killed his brother. Tatsu managed to disarm Takeo of the sword and found that she could actually hear her dead husband Maseo talking to her through the sword. Interestingly, in the comics, she actually has a very close relationship to Batman. She's been on the same teams as him several times and has in fact saved his life on several occasions. So because a lot of the villains on the squad are Batman villains, it's likely that she's there to make sure that they don't escape. So it's unclear as to who shoots down the squad's helicopter, the only thing we know is that Harley Quinn for some reason enjoyed the ride. Harley Quinn's real name is Dr. Harleen Francis Quinzel MD. And she actually started out as a psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum. She becomes fascinated with the Joker and offers to treat him. It appears they're going to be telling her origin story in the film as well. And it was her that was being tortured in the first trailer when the Joker says his now famous line, I'm not going to kill you, I'm just going to hurt you really, really bad. She falls in love with the Joker. Harley is then also seen falling into what looks like some kind of toxin, perhaps at Ace Chemicals, which was teased in Batman v Superman. And is also where the Joker fell into a vat of chemicals, giving him his green hair and pale skin. It's possible that in the film they're going to make Harleen share a similar origin to the Joker. We then later see her being carried out by Batman to the Batmobile with the next stop probably being her return to Arkham Asylum but this time as a patient. So the big mystery for me is who are these rock monsters and how are they linked to the main villain of the movie and who is the main villain of the movie? Well if the rumours are true it's the Enchantress played by Cara Delevingne. She could be the villain as her powers include creating energy constructs similar to the vines we see here. But I'm really not sure that the Enchantress is responsible for all of this mayhem, which is probably earlier in the movie. This looks like it could possibly be the Floronic Man, or could it be the Tattoo Man? But it's definitely not the Enchantress, and this is clearly a distinct being in the subway. But as I said, I think it's more likely she will later work with the team, as we see her talking very calmly to Amanda Waller in this shot. But this of course could be the calm before the storm. So the history of the Enchantress is that she is actually June Moon, who is pictured here. Interesting it appears that in the film she is going to be in a relationship with Rick Flagg. So anyway, in the comics she stumbles across a magical being who grants her the power to change into the powerful sorceress, the Enchantress, if she speaks the word Enchantress. Similar in a way to how Billy Batson changes into Captain Marvel when he says the word Shazam. Interestingly, she has been part of Justice League Dark, and if her character is a hit with audiences, we could see the planned Justice League Dark movie being fast-tracked. We see Rick Flagg storming her apartment and there are all sorts of black markings and symbols on the wall. These presumably get there during her transformation into the Enchantress, which we saw more of in the first trailer here. So here we see Harley Quinn doing a very Black Widow-esque move, taking down one of these rockmen. Notice how this takes place in an office, which looks very similar to the office which Joker and his team storm earlier in the trailer. Is Joker somehow responsible for these rock monsters? And is he the ultimate villain pulling the strings? Or is he just coming to rescue Harley? Harley. I have no idea. Only that the Joker looks amazing and extremely menacing. Deadshot firing his trademark risk mounted guns, Harley's hammer, a blinged out Joker talking to an unknown man who we can see in the mirror, and Joker trying to outrun Batman with his chromed out purple Infinity G35 coupe with Vador body kit. We see the Joker in a number of outfits throughout the movie which indicate he's probably going to be a big part of the movie. Capturing him could be one of the missions of the Suicide Squad, and the squad may at some point receive a little bit of help from Batman himself, who is seen swan diving off a building with a breather in his mouth. It's also possible that Batman's scenes are just limited to flashbacks. Joker with a smoke grenade and there's of course a chance that this could be filled with Joker toxin. And how hilarious does Boomerang seem to be? Here he is taunting Diablo with a lighter. It appears that Diablo's powers are activated by anger as we see Deadshot provoking him in order to get his powers on point. So overall this trailer looks amazing. I'm personally as excited for this movie as Captain America Civil War, if not more so, because it's really going to be the first appearances of most of these characters on the big screen. So there you have it! Hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please like and then share it. I post lots of videos every week on comic book movies, TV, including Star Wars and other blockbusters, so why not subscribe? Thanks again, cheers for now.